interest, nominal and effective rate. Let's look at the lecture outline. We'll first discuss what a nominal rate is. We'll then move on to discuss effective rate. And then we'll look at how a nominal rate will be converted into an effective one. Let's get into the lecture. Nominal rate. So with nominal rate, the interest rate is provided. That is supposed to be calculated on the principal. And we are also given the compounding period. So in the previous examples or the test of our understanding that we have solved, it was three years. The compounding period becomes important when we are comparing two rates that have different periods of compounding. So some of the compounding, even though it is three years, it will be compounding semi-annually, that is twice in a year. So it means that over the three years, it will compound six times. Some will just be compounding annually, that is just three. So when you calculate 10%, in those two scenarios you will be having different figures okay so unless you are giving any information to the number of compounding you should just assume the compounding is done once in a year effective rate on the other hand also known as the annual percentage rate so this is where the interest is compounded maybe monthly or at any number of time other than it's being compounded once in a year so this rate also takes into consideration the number of compounding activity and expresses it as a rate in an annual figure so as the nominal rate will give you a figure which assumes that the compounding has been done once in a year the effective rates will also do as the nominal rate does i will consider the periodic compounding that is done in a year when you have a nominal rate which is compounding once in a year it will be the same as the annual percentage rate hence the same formula can be used so you normally have financial institutions giving you two quotes one for nominal and one for effective okay so the nominal is the rate which is used per a compound if there are multiple compounds within a year they will give you the effective rate, which takes into consideration the number of compounding that has been done. Let's learn how to convert nominal to effective interest rate. The formula will be 1 plus I divided by M, all raised to the power M minus 1, where M is the number of compound periods and I is the interest rate in question. Let's test our understanding. What is the effective rate of return of a 15% per annum monthly compounding interest? So because it's monthly, the number of compounding is 12. So when we come to a solution, we bring the formula 1 plus I divided by M, all raised to the power M minus 1. So the effective rate will be 1 plus 0 0.5, which is the 15%, divided by 12, which is the number of compounding period, because it was done monthly all raised to the power 12 minus 1. So this will give us 1 plus 0 0.0125 all raised to the power 12 minus 1, giving us 1.0125 raised to the power 12 minus 1, which is 1.1608 minus 1, leading to 0 0.1608, which is equal to 16.08 so a 15% nominal rate which compounds annually on an investment is equal to 16.08% so you can just pick the 16.08% apply it to the principal of such an investment you will get the same figure as taking 15% on an investment compounding monthly for 12 times let's test our understanding to make clearer what we have discussed so far Eliana invests five hundred thousand dollars on first January, twenty twenty, for three years at fifteen percent compound interest per month. Find the total amount to her credit on thirty first December, twenty twenty, using first the nominal rate, and then the effective rate. When we come to the solution, starting with the nominal rate, the formula for compounding because you are going to do it over multiple periods. It's a 
equal to P multiplying 1 plus R raised to the power N. So per the question, the principal, which is the P, is $500,000. The rate will be 1.25%, which is the 15% nominal rate provided. Because it is going to be compounded over 12 months, we'll divide it by 12. So we use the monthly nominal rate to compound the principal monthly. The N, which is the number of compounding periods, will be 12. So the compounding amount, which is the A, will be 500,000 into bracket 1 plus 0 0.0125 raised to the power of 12. When you divide the 1.25 by 100, which is the percentage, that is what you get. Moving on, it will give us 500,000 times 1.1608. So the amount compounded 12 times using the nominal rate will give us $580,400. So if you want to find the interest which has compounded on the principal of $500,000, we'll take the $500,000, which is the principal, out, and that will give us $80,400. So a principal of $500,000, which has a nominal rate of 15% compounded per month will result in $80,400 as its interest. If we use the effective rate, which we calculated in the earlier scenario, we'll just pick the percentage that is the effective rate and just multiply on the principal and it will give us the interest and straightforward. The effective rate was 16.08%. So it will be multiplied on the principal of 500,000 and then the interest will be $80,400 as seen going through the nominal rate process. Let's test our understanding again. What effective rate will a stated annual rate of 6% yield when compounded semi-annually? So here, because it's semi-annually, the compounding will be two. The solution is we state the formula again 1 plus 1 divided by m raised to the power m minus 1. Effective rate will now be 1 plus 0 0.06, which is the 6%, divided by 2 raised to the power 2, which is the number of compounding times, minus 1, giving us 1 plus 0 0.03 raised to the power 2 minus 1, giving us 1.03 raised to the power 2 minus 1, which will lead to 1.609 minus 1. You have 0 0.609 when you take the 1 out, and then it will give you 6.09% when you multiply by 100. So 6% when compounded twice using the nominal rate will give you 6.09%. So the interest that 6% will give you compounding it twice will be equal to if you are multiply 6.09% on the principal at a go. Let's broaden the conversation on the test of our understanding that we just had. Ian invests $1 million on 1st January 2020 at 6% compound interest by annually, meaning the compounding is done twice in a year. We have to find the total amount to his credit on 31st December 2020 using the nominal rate and the effective rate for solution will start with the nominal rate, which was 6%. So the formula will be the principal into bracket 1 plus R or raised to the power N. The principal in this scenario will be $1 million. The rate will be 3, which is the nominal rate of 6%. Because it is going to be compounded twice in a year, we have to divide it by 2 and apply it to the principal in the middle of the year then the number of compounding periods will be two so the solution will be one million multiplying one plus 0 0.03 that is when three percent is converted into three divided by 100 or raised to the power two that will move on to give us one million multiplying 1.0609 giving us a compound amount of one million and sixty thousand nine hundred dollars. The interest will therefore be sixty thousand nine hundred dollars.
So if you had multiplied just the 6% on the 1 million, it would have given you $60,000. But because it compounded twice, it has moved to 60,900. So we have to be very careful the wording which is used, which may suggest the frequency that the compounding occurs. Coming to the effective rate, the workings that we did, the conversion, we had 6.09. So we'll just go ahead and multiply it by the principal. 6.09% is equivalent to 0 0.0609. That's when you divide 6.09 by 100. Any item with percent by it means that you should divide by 100. Okay. It will give us interest of $60,900 equivalent to the nominal rate. Instead of dividing the nominal rate by the frequency of compounding and finding the interest per the period, you can just convert it to, into effective rate and just apply it on the principal and get the interest straight away. If you want to know the total amount accumulated, that will be the 60,900 added to the 1 million.